Okay. <laughs> I guessed one. I didn't want to guess corn, please. That blood coursing through my veins. It grows restless. This didn't make sense last year. Still Selling make sense. Hands. Tricks are for kids. Thanks, Tarantula. Thanks for five dollar donation. I can't contain it. Uh, this was better last year because female corn was kind of kind of sexy with all that. <laughs> it's Leon. I've had my fun pretending to be human, but the need for charades has passed. Ooh, this is the closest to a guest I have. Wait, what? They've never done this before. Wait, they're trying to show something. He has an AOE reduction. For the future. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Whoa! Whoa! That's so cool, Julia. That makes sense, actually. There is no way to stop the darkness encroaching on this world. Okay, she sounds too cute to be taken seriously. Light and dark. She has light and dark, just like Ledger, just like Ledger and Julia. Let the darkness come. Oh, that's just a recolor. Mm, still cool though. Of course. Ike, fallen. Wipe it all away. Oh, everything. Oh, he sounds so good. Chaos Ragnall, mayhem ether, darting. Wait, darting breath. Hate, hate. See, guys, one of my guesses was um, fallen Grail. Grail as he goes crazy and insane and kills a certain special someone. Uh, Plumeria is here. Okay, so no guess, no hint to the Tem Straw hero or GHB hero. Oh, uh, but I wanted to see Fallen Grill instead of Fallen Ike. Of course, the 40th summon is on a new hero's banner and only new hero's banners. And there you go. Okay, let's go over that. Oh my goodness, guys. I, I was hoping so badly it wouldn't be Bale Cord. Uh, Leon was something that I kind of had a guess on and I was hoping for Fallen Grail ever since someone mentioned that. That sounded real cool to me. Julia, I didn't see coming, but it makes perfect sense to me. All right, anyways, here we go. First hero, Fallen Corrin. We already have Fallen Female Corrin. And I liked Fallen Female Corrin a lot because she, <laughs> she didn't look like she was a Fallen hero. She didn't look like she was despairing. She looked like she was in heat. Just saying. Uh, so yeah, I, I liked her a lot. But male corn is not going to be able to pull that off. Now, it will feel bad if male corn is better, but you know, he kind of should be better. Now, female fallen corn was colorless, but male corn is blue. Uh, he has brutal breath, grants speed plus three, of course, grants attack speed, defense res plus X during combat. Is this just going to be like fallen corn? Calculates X based on number of allies in two spaces of unit, zero allies goes for plus five, one plus three, two plus one, um, and more than three allies is zero. If the number of allies within two spaces is less or equal to one, inflicts special cooldown charge minus one on foe per attack during combat. Oh, so he gets a guard skill if there's only one ally or less than one ally, aka he's alone. Wait a second, didn't they just take what they had from last year and made it better? I mean, I guess he's blue. All right, anyways, Glimmer, Glimmer's whatever. Attack speed solo four, that's super good with him, especially. GHB is Ashnard. It's Ashnard? <laughs> oh boy. How do you know that? Okay, if you're not lying to me, that's so cool. That's so cool, man. Man, it makes more sense now that Ike is here then. Oh my, okay, anyways, we'll talk about that when it comes to it. All right, attack speed solo works perfectly with Brutal Breath because the idea is stay alone. You get attack speed plus seven during combat, which by the way, this is this our first solo four skill? And it's just one more attack and speed? Kind of, kind of lame then. <laughs> uh, all right. But it stacks perfectly with Brutal Breath because if you keep him alone, he gets plus five to all stats and he also gets a guard ability, which is such a potent combination together. Null follow-up, of course, is super good. Great against armors, wary fighter, um, bold fighter, vengeful fighter, all the fighter skills uh, get broken. And hero skills that generate guaranteed follow-ups like from Tibarn, from... Uh, who else was there? 
There are a lot of heroes who generate guaranteed follow-ups. They can also negate that. Rouse speed defense, of course, because you want to keep them alone. It's our turn if unit is not adjacent to an ally. Grant speed defense plus six for one turn. So very, very good hero. And it looks like it's just a direct upgrade on Fallen Corn. Fallen Corn. Here's my Fallen Corn. I got plus attack minus res. Uh, I don't really use her because I haven't found the need to. But I should build her sometime. Anyways, Savage Breath. Calculates X based on number of allies within two spaces of unit. Zero allies is plus six, one ally plus four, two allies plus two, and three allies is zero. In other words, Fallen Corrin, female Corrin, has a one point advantage, but she doesn't have the guard ability that Fallen Male Corrin has. And of course, attack speed solo three got upgraded to attack speed solo four for one more attack and speed. And then yeah, null follow up, rouse speed, defense. Null follow up versus sudden panic. As good as Sun of Panic was, it didn't really make sense on Corrin because her HP wasn't that high. 43 HP? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't quite work. Something like Null Follow-Up on Fallen Male Corrin just makes much more sense to me. And of course, having a C skill would be nice. And... Rouse Speed Defense makes perfect sense on him. Yeah. Just a direct upgrade outside of the fact that you've gone from Colors to Blue. And he should have a BST advantage too, so... Fallen Corn, Fallen Mill Corn, looking really, really good. Uh, I don't want to get into this, but ever since last year, people mentioned putting Lightning Breath on Fallen Corn. That hurt so much. I hope with this combination, with Attack Speed Solo 4 and Brutal Breath being better than Savage Breath, people don't go that direction anymore. I'm sorry. Last year, when I heard people talking about putting Lightning Breath on Female Corn, I just thought it was so stupid. So stupid. There was just, why? Why? Anyways, moving on. Fallen Male Corn, pretty good. Animations too. He really looks upset. Oh my god. He looks so good. He looks so good. But... Oh. I've always thought Leon was pretty smexy. I've always thought that. He looks so good. I can't... How do you look so good? Perfect wife for Ephraim. Anyways, wow. The canine showing. Damn. Damn. Those look yaoi hands. Okay, this is also the first time they've ever done this. They've never started a battle from this point. They always start from this point. Um, this point where, where they're showing now. They usually don't show like the start of the battle like that. So there's a reason for that. And I believe it's in Blood Tome. Grants attack plus 3. If foe uses bow, dagger, magic, or staff, reduces enemy from AoE specials by 80%. Ooh. And reduces damage from foe's attack by 50%. And if foe is also colorless, grants weapon triangle advantage to unit and inflicts weapon triangle disadvantage on foe. Blood Tome. Blood Tome is just Leon's Tome, but much, much, much better. Leon's Tome is outdated at this point. I'm talking about base Leon, of course. Because it's just basically uh, extra attack on a, on a Raven Tome. I'll be honest, Leon is kind of out of date at this point. Uh, Nanglefer was just, uh, well, Colorless, it's it's just a Raven Tome, that's it. Colorless of Vanish, that is it. The new Tome, Blood Tome, grants attack plus three. That's already pretty good, because he outmites, the Blood, Blood Tome outmites Nanglefer by three already. And of course, the special abilities, reducing AoEs against Bow, Dagger, Magic, or Staff, that's huge, 80% reduction is so much damage. And then it reduces damage from foe's attack by 50%, which makes him such an ideal tank. He's also gone from red to green. Additionally, he has soul. Bonus doubler. Oh. That wasn't needed, but so good. Null see disrupt. That was definitely needed. That allows him to take on Veronica's, take on Fire Street Bow heroes. That is a perfect combination of Blood Tome. And then, of course, if you buff him up with bonus doubler... Those stats get doubled up. And he also has Rouse Attack Res, which is probably going to be the theme here. Everyone just has Rouses, because they all want to be alone. Though Leon doesn't have to be alone. You can just re remove that Rouse Attack Res and use something else. Blood Tome has no such uh, limitations, whether it's being close to allies or further away from allies. That's just a major, major upgrade on base Leon. Honestly, my suggestion for base Leon back in the day was Noglifer, Triangle Adept, QR, uh, whatever you wanted for C and your seal. And I basically did this. But this is, I can tell you right right away, this doesn't work anymore. You go against a Ludring Alm, Leon loses. So I don't even use Leon anymore. If I go up against Fire Sweep Weapon Heroes, I don't use Leon anymore. It just doesn't work. So it's really nice to see him get upgraded. Now, what would Leon's Refine be to 
help him catch up because Fallen Leon is looking pretty damn amazing and hot. Did I mention? Did I mention Leon's hot? Have, has anyone ever seen that GIF of Leon? He's real hot. <laughs> He's hitting a sixty. What? And this is animation. He looks so good. He looks so good. I'm excited. Leon. Leon's awesome. Julia. Oh my god. <sighs> what happened? What happened? When Julia was first released in this game, I thought she looks pretty, pretty ugly. Now she looks so hot. There's something about girls when they're like... Come on, guys. When the nice girl becomes crazy, she goes yandere on you. Does she not get more hot? Does she not get more hot? She looks so much better this way. Maybe it's just a kink of mine, but no, I think she looks so much more hotter. I'm gonna bring up Julia so you guys can see, but... Damn, <laughs> that's all I can say. This isn't even close. Which one do you prefer? Base Julia or Fallen Julia? Come on, this is pretty free. Base Julia looks like she doesn't know where she is, what's going on. She doesn't even look like she knows what her name is. Fallen Julia? Fallen Julia looks serious. She looks like she has a plan. She looks like she wants something. Like your life. But you can't really tell because, you know. That. Those eyes are so entrancing, man. Anyways. Fallen Julia. Real hot. Alright, she has Dark Scripture. Grants attack plus 3. If unit is not adjacent to your ally, inflicts attack res minus 6 on foe during combat. And if foe does not have effective against dragons, unit makes a guaranteed fall attack. Wait, 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 what? She's not anti-dragons, guys. Wow. Basically, if she goes against anyone who isn't effective against dragons, like base Julia, like Deirdre, like... Crom, I would say even dragons like legendary Tiki. Basically, so long as they're effective against dragons, she's not good against them because she won't double. She's gonna have really low speed, but against everybody else, she's gonna double them. Wow. Red Julia. And of course, attack res minus six on foe during combat is huge. It reminds me a lot of Kyria, but Kyria is combat debuff and it's within two spaces, so it catches enemy heroes even if they don't fight Kyria. Whereas with Julia, this is just within the battle, but that's still super good. Iceberg, of course, attack res solo four if unit is not adjacent to your ally, grants attack res plus seven during combat. All these heroes want to stay alone. Light and dark. This is on Legend Julia, super good skill. I love the skill a lot. Attack speed, defense res minus two on foe, neutralizes foe's bonuses so they cannot be buffed, and disables foe skills that count damage using the lower of foe's defense or res during combat. In other words, if there was a dragon and it's targeting lower defense or res, it just doesn't work. She's so good. How hard is she hitting? And Panic Smoke, of course, is such a great C skill. Light and Dark was already such a great skill. This entire kit is so good. So she stays alone. Drop their attack by 8, res by 8, defense by 2, and speed by 2. And then you increase your own attack and res by 7. And then you just slaughter them. As long as they're not effective against dragons, you double them, they will die. You got Panic Smoke as well. Yes, yeah, she's super good. Yeah, she's a red mage. Dang. Dang. Okay, she looks super good. Who did this? This art is so good. Ike actually looks demented, but I'm, s I'm gonna still say it straight up. I would have preferred to see Fallen Grail because that's canon. It's just, we never see that in the game. We only hear about certain characters talking about Grail in his worst of moment um, where he lost control. But I would have liked to see Fallen Grail. Though, of course, that probably won't sell as good as Fallen Ike. This also does make some sense canonically. Anyways, he looks so good, Jesus. This reminds me of like Berserk. Has anyone read Berserk? I've even watched like the original Berserk. I love, I love Berserk. Anyways, he has Chaos Ragnall. Unit can counterattack attack regardless of foe's range. Of course, all Ragnalls and Alondite would do such a thing. Their sister swords, after all. Grants bonus to attack speed, defense, res during combat equals current penalty on each of ooh, on each of unit stats times two. Ooh, wait, 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 what? Example: If unit has a minus seven penalty attack, grants attack plus fourteen. What? For a net bonus of seven attack, 
calculate each stat bonus independently. You can't debuff him. If you debuff him, he becomes even more powerful. Wait, that's so ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. Oh my god. What? What? In the current meta, it's debuffs are just flying around everywhere. If Ike catches multiple debuffs, he just becomes more and more powerful. He doesn't negate the debuffs. He turns them into a bonus, though, because he doubles them up. So it doesn't matter if he negates them or not, because he just turns it into an asset. Wow. If Ike has really high defense, really high attack, which he should, and his speed, if his speed's high, he'll grab, like, the chill towers. Oh my goodness, he's, he could be so good. He also has a new ether, Mayhem Ether. During combat, treats foe's defense res as if reduced by 50%. Of course, restores HP equals 50% of damage dealt. Wait, what? Isn't that just base ether? <laughs> Radiant Ether. During combat, treats foe's defense as if reduced by 50%. Restores HP equals 50% of damage dealt. During combat, treats foe's defense res, defense res as if reduced by 50%. Restores HP equals 50%. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's for cooldown, guys. But I'm saying, it's the same thing as Vanguard Legend Ike. It's Radiant Ether, but they just renamed it into Mayhem Ether. Oh, come on. I thought it was going to be cooler than that. I th come on, guys. Let's just be serious. That's just... That's just a renamed Radiant Ether. They did... Oh, stop teasing me with these cool names. I thought it was going to be so much cooler. It sounds so much cooler, though, but it's the same thing. Anyways, he also went from Warding Breath which was res plus four during combat and special cooldown charge plus one per attack into darting breath. If Oni shoots combat, grants speed plus four during combat and special cooldown charge plus one per attack. Um, okay. I, I like that a lot because we have every indication that he's going to be fast because he has repel three. <laughs> repel, close call. These are absolutely broken skills. Why are they broken? If you outspeed your opponent by 10, you get a damage reduction of 40%. And you should be doing pretty well there, because Darting Breath, when he's getting attacked, he gets another 4 speed. And of course, special cooldown charge plus 1 per attack. So every time you attack, you just get your specials quicker. So he gets to use Mayhem Ether every single time he gets hit. He gets to spam it out. Oh my god. And of course he has attack speed. Oh. Huh? All the heroes thus far have wanted to be alone. Why does this Ike want to be nearby people? At start of turn, if unit is adjacent to an ally, grants attack speed plus 5 to unit for one turn. What? Corrin. Rouse speed defense. Staying alone. Leon. Rouse attack res. Staying alone. Uh, Julia, panic smoke. I mean, that, that, that doesn't really matter. But it doesn't do anything for your allies. Ike. What happened to you, Ike? You're crazy, but you want to be nearby people? What? <laughs> Okay, that's weird. Attack speed, oath. So, stay near someone for plus 5 attack, plus 5 speed. Sure. <laughs> what the heck? That doesn't make sense. Anyways, he's looking super good too. Counter attack regardless of range. Uh, cannot be debuffed. Well, that's not true. You can debuff him. Just that you give him stats instead. <laughs> uh, Mayhem ether, a reskinned radiant ether. Fast ethers are always nice. Starting breath means you get it every single time he gets attacked, essentially. Because he's charging it up super fast. Repel 3, huge damage reduction, AoE damage reduction as well, and attack speed of to increase his attack and speed so long as he starts his turn next to an ally. Oh. How good does he look? So he can be debuffed by sudden panic nimnos. Wait, sudden how's that even work? If if sudden panic hits him, doesn't it turn into minus, which when it, it turns into combat it turns into a plus? That's what I think is going to happen. Anyways, guys, new banner coming out on the 8th, three days from now. There is no weak link here. Oh, there's also no 4-star for somebody focus. But guys, let me know. Who do you think is the best hero here? And which color would you go for? For me, though, it's so hard not to go red. Red is looking super good. That Julia is hyper deadly. That Ike is beyond awesome. Corn is, of course, super good as well. I expect him to have higher BST than female corn as well. And Leon? Leon just is probably your best colorless hero killer right now. He seems really cool too. Everyone here looks looks and seems like such an excellent hero. Alright, let's see what you guys are saying. Red, red, <laughs> lots of red. Uh, probably Ike. Just red. Red. Red and blue. Ike. Leon's green. Okay. 
blue and ike with 40 summons all right anyways keep in mind you got 40 summons so if you use 135 orbs i believe you will get the heroes you're looking for whichever hero you want do you make that commitment let me know if you will anyways good luck on the summons comes out in three days everyone looks good it's looking to be a great banner